Hi, everybody. So let's take a look at our flashcards for Unit 1A, Constitutional Origins. So I'm going to walk through these flashcards. This is a rapid-fire review. It is not intended to cover every single detail that we've covered in the unit, but rather go through some of the highlights for each of these core concepts and direct you where you might want to look for additional resources and information. So the first flashcard, the first few flashcards, are about underlying principles of American government. The first one we have here is natural rights. Natural rights is kind of an enlightenment, an enlightenment principle discussed by John Locke. And he talked about how he thought people had the right to life, liberty, and property. They're born with these rights. And that uh, people can't have these rights taken away unless they voluntarily have them taken away in some sort of a social contract. And, you know, what are these and how are they a part of the ideas on limited government that the U.S. government is based on? So these next few flashcards are going to talk about this idea of limited government and the idea that the government should be set up in a way in which uh, their natural rights of the people are protected. And the government should have power to protect those natural rights, but uh, people uh, should not be giving, be giving up too many rights in order to protect, uh, into, in order to protect their basic fundamental God-given rights. So the government should have limits and it should not be able to take away key core rights life, liberty, and property, or as Jefferson will later talk about in the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our second flashcard is the concept of popular sovereignty. And this is the idea that power comes from the people themselves. Sovereignty is kind of power, authority, and popular meaning from the people. So this is you know, a, a very core concept in the American political system. And again, limited government. It's related to the effect that the United States government it has power from the people themselves, and therefore it's limited. It can't harm the people themselves. The people are the one who give them the power to do what they do. And so if the government is going to go against this social contract, then the people themselves can remove power from the government or overthrow the government. The idea of republicanism, another underlying philosophical concept of the U.S. political system, that the United States is a government in which people are represented by others. They choose their representatives in this republic. And that's what Republican republicanism means. This is not about the political party Republican. It's about the political philosophical underlying principle that people will choose their represent representatives. Uh, these representatives will be limited because they'll be entering into a government that is created through a social contract. The social contract is the idea that people give up some of their natural rights but not all of them. They give up some of them, and then the government will have the authority to protect the rest of their natural rights, and the government is limited. can't go beyond what is proscribed in the social contract. All of this emerges and is kind of talked about in the Declaration of Independence in some way. You know, uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson talks about natural rights. He says people are born with, he says all men are created equal, and they're born with rights, inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He talks about popular sovereignty. Government is something that comes with the consent of the governed. Uh, and we know that he talks about this social contract where, in the case of the British during the American Revolution, they were going against some of the rights that the colonists believed they had. They were taxing them without representation. They were oppressing them in, uh, in many ways, according to the colonists. And so the colonists said they now have an overarching, uh, an overarching uh, uh, desire, or I guess you could say uh, right, to overthrow, overthrow the government. And how are these ideas embodied in the Constitution themselves? The, the Constitution itself, well, I won't go into too much detail about the Constitution yet. We'll talk about it later on in the review videos. But um, certainly the idea of popular sovereignty uh, is in the Constitution. I mean, the first line of the Constitution is we the people. And so it's, it's a document that's supposed to be about what the people are creating. So the power is coming from the people. It's creating a Republican form of government uh, that's guaranteed in the U.S. political system. The, the American people are electing representatives. And there is a social contract in, in, in many ways. The, the, the government is given authority. They're given power. But even in the Bill of Rights, which come at the end of this whole process of creating the Constitution, we see limits and restrictions on what the government can't do. And so there's this agreement between uh, the people and the government itself. And so the government is very limited under the U.S. political system, even under the U.S. Constitution, uh, although they are less limited than they were under the Articles of Confederation, there are key limits. 
So we'll stop here after going through very quickly the first six flashcards, and we'll pick up with number seven in the next video.